Hey, it's Matt from the Green Arcade, back playing some more Farming Simulator 15 here at Sosnovka. Uh, we've got our uh, field number 7. Uh, 7 and uh, whatever this little free bit you want to call it. We'll just call it all field 7, because that's technically what it is. When we get 13, we'll call it 7 and 13. So, uh, we're just about done here, and uh, I've noticed something. When we get to this point in the field, if he's on higher worker, he hits that fence, and he backs into it. So... We may have to put in a little bit of a grass strip, just a little bit right here on the edge, uh, on the top edge of this little bit here. But uh, yeah, we're still rolling with this canola harvest. Uh, still going. We uh, haven't hit a great demand uh, for anything other than wood chips, I think. Uh, thinking our next purchase may be a harvester so get somebody to help him out to knock these fields out quicker thinking the larger rostel mash will suffice uh, until we can get a new holland why is that because new holland is the best brand on fs15 um, Wondering which, which brand will be the top on 17. Will it be Massey Ferguson? Will it be Challenger? Will it be Fent? I uh, don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So yeah, I don't know if he'll hit this barn. Oh, he hit it. Yep, alright. And he's stuck there, so we actually have to unhire him, drive it forward, and uh, continue on. So yeah, definitely have to put a grass strip in that before the next harvest on this field. I knew there would be some issues, you know. There's probably there may be an issue over there on field eight, that little bit over there. Uh, he may back into the fence over there. So we'll just have to wait and see. And we could plow that up and run it right along that fence and just you know take the planter and plant around the edges first. I don't know, you can do it that way. Um, I kind of just like the higher worker thing because while somebody's planting, you could be doing something else like cutting trees or harvesting another field or something. So, it's just, it's kind of nice. You know, you can turn the fertilizer on, let him go. Turn the planter on, let him go. Cultivator, if we had one, let him go. Because if not, we're going to have to uh, plant and cultivate and probably fertilize too uh, all around the edges for every field so all right we're finished with seven we'll head over here and see what happens i'm going to start him turn the lights on for safety while i'm on the highway i want to start him on this little weird edge here i don't remember that being there Ooh, boy whoa we're going sideways here Talk about drifting. All right. Well, we may come back for that little bit. I want to see how he does on higher worker here. See if he backs into this fence. Making his turn. Yeah, he's going to back into it. That's way too close. He can't even make his full turn. Um, hmm. Well, I guess I could harvest this from east to west. I'm fixing to spray your car, buddy. Nope, he got out of the way too quick. I guess I could harvest this from east to west because I think he's pretty... Well, I don't know. I extended that part of the field down there, too. Ah, yeah, we could cut through it. It doesn't matter. I don't know. What do y'all think? Leave a comment below if you think we should uh, plant grass and uh, make it to where we can hire workers on it, or should we just go ahead and plow it all up and plant around the edges and everything? That's a lot of work, though. I think we should plant a little grass. 
The only thing is, if you plant any more grass back there, you're not going to have anything worth, you know, going through there with with a harvester. So we may just grass that little that little ledge back in back there. I mean, we've we've got plenty of crop. I don't think we'll miss that little edge too bad. So yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut a little in row here. I'll get down to the end here and turn him around. Say this is an in row, this is more like a mid row. Mid rows work uh, really great on large fields. Um, Especially if it's something with a higher yield. Because you have a small harvester like this, he's going to fill up pretty quick. So yeah, if we were to start him down here and he goes off that way and this was wheat, he would fill up before he got to the end and then we'd have to drive on the crop. That's one thing we're trying to avoid is driving on the crop. So when we do weed on this, we may have to uh, to cut a mid row. But yeah, I think I'm gonna grass that back in over there. We'll go ahead and cut it, cut what we got growing on it. But uh, and look, he's actually gonna go and get that little bit there. Take him back uh, and get this last little chunk on the edge here. Oh, oh, that was rough. May have bent my thresher prongs or something on that one. That's a close up. So we should get a lot of weed off of this. So. Got him hired out now. Let's see, where's our other tractor at? He's getting pretty full. I'm going to go ahead and go empty him. And uh, I think I've got a little bit in the JCB over there. Oh, I'm on six. That's why I'm going so slow. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take him back to the homestead and empty him. And uh, make sure our harvester isn't getting full. I think he was about half full when I left him. Just using the uh, log fork as a front weight on this tractor. You know what, I think he might get full before I get back. Let me go ahead and drive that JCB over here with those other tippers and offload him. Got five, about 6,000 liters in this one. And uh, he's stuck on 6-2. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to use that trick. Uh, just press and hold uh, L1 and R1 and square. Hold them down and uh, it pops right back up to the top speed. If I want to go back down to 6 right away, just uh, L1 and R1 and then just press square and it jumps right back down to 6. And I'm going to engage that. Watch the speedometer at the bottom right. Now. See. Whoop. Oh, wait a minute. It's off. I lied to you. Oh, maybe you just have to double double tap it. Engage and disengage. So. Uh-oh. That could be a problem. Yep. So we definitely need to harvest this one north to south. Did not think about that. I think originally that's what I was going to do anyway, was harvest it north to south. May have to put a little grass edge in there. It's a little close to that rock. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's no brakes on this thing. Going downhill. Of course, he's got a pretty large uh, load of canola on there. He's got about, uh, what, just a little over 7,000 liters in there. So I'm going to cut a little edge off of this, and then I'll take him back up and finish this. Alright. 
turned around here and his pipe is coming out. Does he think he's full? Or did I do that? Did I bump that? I may have bumped that. Yep, he's full. Let me get the, back in this JCB here. Well, I got him a tire and turned all kind of around here. It's actually stuck. Come on. Pull it, buddy. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Come on, you got the horsepower. Alright. Can't turn these things too tight. Let's get up to him here before he stops. Alright. We caught him. Go ahead and let him finish uh, offloading here. And I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the New Holland and go empty him. I'll just leave that JCB up there for now. He should be able to finish that last little bit there. Uh, we'll just let him offload and he'll get turned around and finish it off there. All right. How much canola do we have? We have currently 33,000 in storage. I'm going to add another 38,000 to that. And that's just from uh, field 7. Um, I can go up to 42,000 capacity on these trailers. But I'm going to go ahead and go dumping. You know what the best part about these trailers are? They don't push you. On uh, Bjornholm and uh, Westbridge, we use the Flygel trailers. And uh, those are really meant, I think, for a larger... Uh, for a larger tractor. So... They push this little uh, T6. All right, offload the first. We really need a great demand for a crop. Canola would be nice. Okay, we'll head back. Yeah, I don't know that I'll use that uh, JCB in those Flygo trailers for offloading a whole lot, because this, this is a lot easier to drive right here. Eventually, we can get a semi-truck uh, and an auger wagon, maybe. I see all these trees, and... It just makes me want to grab a chainsaw and cut them down. A lot of trees in here. Nothing wrong with trees. I just see money. I will say, I've, the fir trees are a lot easier to work with. Alright, he finished that little bit. And actually missed a little bit down there, looks like, maybe. So we'll head back over to him and see why he missed it. I'm sure he probably wouldn't miss it if he was harvesting the way we intended him to harvest, which would be north to south, so... We'll go ahead and do a little manual harvesting here. I need to add one more little grass strip there. Little flip around, re engage. All right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this little bit over here and then we'll start him on this bigger part of the field. I think I'm just going to take him straight east to west now. He should not have any issues.
until we get over there closer to that fence. But, uh, yeah, we'll hire him and uh, see we've already created one job position there to run the combine. Uh, we'll get old Zet here and get him fired up and let him run the uh, oh that's a hole run the uh, fertilizer maybe um if I can remember where I put it oh I see it way over there I usually park it right there by the fertilizer load point but I remember now I moved it over here And you know, in a previous episode, I think I called him Old Rhett. I don't know why. Maybe because he's red. Uh, but uh, his name is Old Zet. The Old Zetor. Oh, hey, look at that. That's pretty cool. I parked my uh, plow in there. And it shows up on the scale. That's pretty neat. It only weighs uh, 1,469 pounds. Pretty heavy. So yeah, this is a scale. Not sure why you would need it right here. Um, other than maybe for that uh, bunker back there for the uh, cows. Put the uh, chaff in it. Get all that going and let him harvest field 7 and we'll get it uh, replanted soon. Or actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and take this over here, and I'm going to go back and put him on planter. Because I've got that small New Holland over here, I can put him on fertilizer. And then put old Zeth on the planter and get them both going. Keep the process going here. Alright, looks like our combine is still moving. Looks like he's headed back west. Only downside to old Zet is that he goes slow, man. He's 19 miles an hour. Pretty sure he's the slowest tractor in the game. Even the small uh, Herleman and uh, Beer, 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 uh, how do you say it? They go 26, so. And his pipe is not out, so he's not full. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop this right here. Somewhere. Just put it right here. And I'm going to let uh, the small New Holland T4 pick this up. I'm going to take him back and get the planter. How full is that thing getting? Ah, he's about half full. He's good. Nice little drive down through here. The quiet countryside and the sound of a 1930 something diesel. I don't know when he was made. He was made back in the day. He's probably not that old, but just judging by what he looks like. And I'm going by American standards here because, I mean, they, they may still manufacture something that looks like this today over in Eastern Europe, but, uh, no offense, but, I mean, this is so snow cutting. If the, if the uh, factories that make tractors look, you know, anything like the buildings around here, I mean, that fits in perfect. But, uh, no, I think he's older. Um, just basing the design, uh, on American standards, I would say that this tractor was probably made uh, maybe in the 50s, uh, maybe early 60s, but uh, I would say I would say sometime in the 50s. Uh, we're not going here. I'm going to get the planter. 
All right, so we'll get the, the small New Holland on the fert and uh, get the old Zet pulling this uh, planter here. And we'll start planting uh, field seven. Uh, what do we need? We've got 88,000 of barley and we'll have plenty of canola. So we're going to plant wheat uh, in field seven. And we'll do that next time. So remember, until then you reap what you sow. It's Matt from the Grain Arcade.